So everyone, in this video, we're gonna dive into the key clinical anatomy of the quadriceps muscles. We're gonna show you all the anatomy, as well as show you different conditions, such as a patella tendinopathy or Oscar Schlatter's disease, and how that matters in clinical practice. If you're ready to learn, let's dive in. Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's dive into the quadriceps muscles. And the first thing to say, of course, is that the name quadriceps tells us that there are four of these muscles. The first of these is the biggest one, rectus femoris. So rectus femoris originates from two different places. It has a straight head and a reflected head. The straight head originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine of the pelvis. And the reflected head just round the corner originates from the supraacetabular groove, the groove just superior to the acetabulum of the pelvis. From here, the rectus femoris runs down the anterior thigh to insert into the superior patella via the quadriceps tendon that runs between the distal end of the rectus femoris and the patella. The quadriceps tendon then turns into the patella tendon, which inserts into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. You will see this theme of the quadriceps tendon and the patella tendon inserting into the tibial tuberosity throughout the anatomy. So our next muscle of the four is vastus medialis, located on the medial side of the anterior thigh. Now, if we take off the rectus femoris muscle, we'll be able to see this a little easier. We can see that vastus medialis originates from the intertrochanteric line of the proximal femur, which is this large swooping bony landmark here on the anterior femur. And it also originates from the linear aspera running down here on the femur as well. From here, the vastus medialis runs down the medial side of the anterior thigh before, like the rectus femoris muscle, it inserts into the quadriceps tendon, but this time on its medial edge before the quadriceps tendon turns into the patella tendon to insert into the tibial tuberosity. Then we have vastus lateralis located on the lateral side of the thigh. This muscle originates from the greater trochanter on the more lateral side of the proximal femur, as well as the linear aspera on the posterior aspect of the femur. As we said, this muscle runs down the lateral thigh before attaching to the lateral aspect of the quadriceps tendon, which then turns into the patella tendon, inserting into the tibial tuberosity. And finally, we have vastus intermedius, located in the center of the quadriceps, but deep or behind the rectus femoris muscle. Vastus intermedius originates from the anterior surface of the femoral shaft, before it runs down the center of the anterior thigh, and of course, inserting into the quadriceps tendon, which changes into the patella tendon to insert into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. So now let's talk about the all important action of the quadriceps muscles. And the action of these muscles is to extend the knee. And in fact, the quadriceps are the key muscle involved in this movement. So if we now dive into the distal aspect of the quadriceps, we can talk about the extensor mechanism, the mechanism that allows for knee extension. This is made up of the quadriceps tendon, the patella, and the patella tendon. And all three of these different components together make up the extensor mechanism. For an individual to be able to extend their knee, all three of these different structures needs to be intact. Therefore, if your patient has a rupture to the quadriceps tendon, or a fracture of the patella, or a rupture of the patella tendon, they will not be able to complete a straight leg raise or knee extension. This is why one of the most focal tests done in A&E after a patient has a knee trauma is to see whether or not they can complete a straight leg raise to check for the integrity of these three structures and therefore the extensor mechanism. 
So next we're going to talk about the patella tendon in a little bit more detail for the condition of a patella tendinopathy. This is also referred to as jumper's knee because it most commonly occurs with a gradual onset due to repeated explosive movements of the quadriceps like when an individual is jumping. And in fact, it's most commonly seen in individuals who have jumping as a part of their sports or hobbies, such as basketball players, such as long jumpers or high jumpers, to give a few examples. So when a patient has a patella tendinopathy, what we tend to find is that they present with pain in the center of the patella tendon. So around the joint line of the knee anteriorly, which is shown quite nicely here on the anatomy model where you can see the joint line on either side and therefore it's around this anterior section where we expect patients to have pain. And so therefore you may well find that they have pain on palpation of the patella tendon in that region. This is quite nice to differentiate against when your patient might have patella femoral pain where we expect their pain to be a little bit higher around the patella or the trochlea of the femur itself. So therefore, knowing where patients get their pain here is really important. Now, there are a couple of conditions that can present at the more distal patella tendon. First of all, an individual can have an insertional patella tendinopathy, where they tend to have pain around the insertion of the patella tendon into the tibial tuberosity. However, one of the other really important conditions that will present with pain at the tibial tuberosity itself is Osgood Schlatter's disease. More commonly referred to these days as just Osgood Schlatter's because the disease part of this condition is not a very good term. So Osgood Schlatter's occurs due to repeated traction from the patella tendon onto the end plate or the growth plate bone at the tibial tuberosity. This commonly occurs in teenagers where that bone around the tibial tuberosity is still growing. Therefore, it's still a little bit immature and can be therefore more vulnerable to injury as a result. So we find that individuals will come to see us with pain around the tibial tuberosity in particular because that's where the bone is being tractioned from the patella tendon where they might say to us that they've been noticing that when they're playing sports such as football or hockey or netball, they're noticing this pain around the tibial tuberosity in particular with an overload sort of pattern. We expect patients to present with quite marked swelling at the tibial tuberosity, which can be really painful to palpate. So certainly look out for that as well as a part of your differential diagnosis. Note the age is quite important here. Younger individuals of a teenage year have more immature bone and therefore they are more likely to experience a pathology of the bone itself such as Osgood Schlatter's. However, adults and older, so for those between the ages of 20 and 40, whilst the bone has become more strong, they are less likely to experience Osgood Schlatter's because the bone is healthy, but they may be more likely to experience a tendinopathy because the loads going through that tendon are much higher and as tendons get older, they become a little bit more degenerate. So that's a really important point. Age matters. Younger individual, think perhaps Osgood Schlatter's, particularly in your teenagers, Adults and slightly older, you might be thinking about your patella tendinopathy. So next, let's talk about nerve supply. And the nerve supply for the quadriceps muscles comes from the femoral nerve. Notice how the femoral nerve runs down the anterior thigh, which therefore makes sense that the femoral nerve will innervate these muscles because the quadriceps are located on the anterior thigh. Now, if we head up to the spine, we can see that the femoral nerve originates from the nerve roots of L2, L3 and L4. This is really important when we think of pathology like a lumbar spine radiculopathy or a lumbar spine nerve root compression. Here's a couple of reasons why. First of all, L3 for the knee. We know that the myotome associated with the L3 level is knee extension right in the middle of those three. And actually it therefore means and highlights to us that the L3 level carries a huge volume of the nerve supply for the femoral nerve because that knee extension controlled by the quadriceps is so closely associated with that spinal level. 
We can also think about the patella tendon knee reflex when we're doing our reflex testing. The patella tendon reflex tests the reflex at the spinal level L3, L4. Once again, when we look at the nerve supply for the femoral nerve, it makes sense for why that is the case. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, if you want more resources, we have our brilliant Instagram account at Clinical Physio. Loads of brilliant posts and reels for growing physiotherapists. Now, if you want more on anatomy, make sure to check out Clinical Physio membership with the link to membership in the description below, because on membership, we have a whole series of anatomy tutorials with the anatomy boot camps. We have the knee anatomy boot camp, the hip anatomy boot camp, the shoulder anatomy boot camp, the wrist and hand, foot and ankle, and more. So make sure you check that out for all your anatomy learning as well. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for joining us. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.